Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm an Airbus A330 pilot and in today's video I want to talk about the topic of climb D-rates in Airbus aircraft. This is going to be applicable for the A330, 340, 350 and A380, however not for the A320 family of aircraft because on those smaller Airbuses, Airbus does actually not offer climb D-rates. Now let's start with two general topics here. The first is why do we need climb D-rates, what is the benefit and what is the disadvantage of those D-rates and the second is how to use them and when to use them. But we're going to start with the easy question and that is why are there climb D-rates in those wide body airbuses at all? Now. The answer is generally the same for all aircraft types, even though it can vary a little bit depending on the plane in question. So let's start with a general answer. The general answer is an easy one. So your engines will wear down depending on how hot they get and the more thrust you use, the hotter those engines get. Now, especially with older aircraft, think A340s, A330 COs, you are easily going to run into EGT limits when flying the aircraft. That can happen both during the takeoff, especially if you have an older airplane on hand, in a hot and high scenario. Think about airports like Las Vegas with 40 something degrees Celsius in uh, summertime and 2,000 feet elevation, but also Africa. Think, for example, Johannesburg with its 5,500 feet and 30 degrees of temperature. So those definitely make your aircraft a little susceptible to your engines overheating both on takeoff as well as a little bit later during the climb. So climb D-rates reduce your thrust when climbing and thereby keep the temperatures down low. Apart from overheating, the second effect is that due to the lower temperatures in the engine, your engine life is going to be preserved in general, even if you stay below the maximum limits. Remember, Airbus is actively monitoring all those engines through the ACAST system, so if you would constantly run them at the maximum permissible power at MCT, then they would have a shorter lifetime than if you reduced the climb thrust. So it extends engine life. This is especially important on the A330 CO and A340 aircraft these days because those engines are very hard to obtain. So if you burn through one of them or if one of them reaches the end of life, then it may ground the entire aircraft because a new engine may not necessarily be available immediately. Remember, even though many of those aircrafts are put to the boneyard these days, that does not necessarily mean that those engines are still usable that you can find on them. Now, there is a second point that comes into play here as well, and that is those aircraft's sheer performance. So right now we are about to do a small ferry flight from Frankfurt to Cologne. And looking down here, you can see we're at 162 tons takeoff weight. That is over 100 tons below the maximum takeoff weight. Even an A340, let alone an A330, are going to rush into the air like a rocket. And by using climb D-rates, you can kind of control that a little bit. And you can lead to more manageable vertical speeds with those aircraft. Now, those are the reasons why we need climb D-rates. So mostly the fact that it preserves engine life, both from exceeding limits on old engines, as well as generally preserving the engine life due to the lower temperatures. There is, of course, a negative effect to the climb D-rates as well, and that's quite simply that due to the fact that the aircraft needs longer to climb, it will stay at lower altitudes where it flies slower and burns more fuel for a longer time. Therefore, using a climb D-rate burns additional fuel getting to the top of climb. To give you an example, let's just have a look at the Airbus A330 with Rolls-Royce engines. When you have those, 
you need about some five to ten minutes longer depending on whether you're using climb d rate one or climb d rate two and it burns between five to seven hundred kilos of additional fuel but that comes at that comes with the benefit of increasing engine life so generally the engine manufacturers who have conducted studies on whether it's worth using climb d rates or not came to the conclusion that it's worth using them because the increased engine life outweighs the additional fuel usage now how are we going to use the climb d rates then well Let's talk about it. We'll start with the A330, go over the A340 and then eventually into the A350 and 380, which work a little bit different than the A330 and 342. So starting on the A330 and 340, you will find the climb D-rate when you go to the performance next page and then to the climb page. Up here you got the D-rate climb option. Available options are D2, D1 and of course nothing at all. So D-Rate 2 uses approximately 15% reduced thrust and do note that that does not equal 15% less N1. N1 is not directly proportional to thrust output, which is the reason why on the A350 and A380 you actually have a thrust gauge rather than an N1 gauge. Now, D1 and D2 are the available options. So what do you use where? Let's start with the A330, because that is an easy one. On the A330, if you take off with a weight of 200 tons or less, you're using D2. If you take off with a weight of more than 200 tons, all the way up to the max takeoff weight, you are going to use D1. Now, when would you not use any climb D rate at all then? Well, basically only if you have problems meeting any altitude constraints from your flight plan. That may either be SID constraints or either something en route. Generally speaking, if ATC asks you to expedite the climb, you would try to maintain the climb D-rate if you can, but if necessary, it can be removed. There are no immediate negative effects that would outweigh an ATC request based on the long-term engine life of your aircraft. So. Try to keep the day rate as long as possible. We even keep it all the way up to cruise level, even though it might extend the climb to like 35 minutes until you actually reach the top of climb. It still achieves a benefit. Now, let's take the A340 now. On the A340, you can actually use D2 all the way up to the maximum takeoff weight and indeed that is what many operators do and this climb d rate down here is actually the reason why so many people think that the four hair dryers on the a340 would not produce much thrust during the climb now if you don't use the climb d rate the a340 takes a reasonable amount of time like 23 to 25 minutes to get to cruise level which is what an A330 would take roundabout as well. If you use the D-rate climb, obviously it's going to take longer, up to 35 minutes, and that's completely realistic. Now, when would you use D1 on the A340? Basically only if required by climb performance, for example due to obstacles, due to constraints, or any other reason ATC requests would be one that um, would make a steeper climb necessary. Apart from that, for economical reasons, always recommended to use the highest possible D-rate on the A340. Now, let's quickly talk about the A350 as well, because the A350 is one of those aircraft where things are a little bit different, and the A380 is the same. So, the reasons when and why to use the climb D-rate are absolutely the same as they are on the A330 and A340. Of course, this is not going to have an immediate effect on the engines those have with those new aircraft at least another 10 years on pretty much any plane currently in the fleet. However, in that time it will definitely show and the entire data over the aircraft's lifespan is capped so that in 10 years time it might matter if a company went for the fuel benefit nowadays instead of going for the engine life benefit. Now, there is a difference between the older and the newer Airbus models and that is that the A350 and the A380 have 
automatic climb D rate. So on the climb panel in the MFD, you are just going to have an option full or D rated. D rate is the default option. It's automatically active and you don't need to worry about which D rate you need to enter because the airplane is automatically going to determine the maximum D-rate that it can apply and will do that automatically. That's both the A350 and the A380. Now, on those aircraft, if maximum climb is desired, you're just going to go to the climb panel on the MFD and replace the D-rate with the full climb thrust, then the airplane is going to give you full climb. A small note over here, the Flabber Wire A380 does currently not model this function, so at the moment you cannot select this in the Flabber Wire A380. I do hope that this video gave you a nice little insight into the climb D-rates. I hope that it does answer a couple of your questions. So for now, thank you very much for watching. As always, like, comment and subscribe. And if you really love what I'm doing on this channel, I would appreciate a small donation through the Buy Me a Coffee link in the video description below. Thank you very much and I'm looking forward to see you all again on the next one.